Hi Soul Tribe, it's the light, also known as Angelique, not Angie. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone who donated for me to get to my friend's mom's funeral. I was crying, guys. I really was, because sometimes I feel like I don't get enough support on this channel, and I'm telling you, those donations within like an hour started to pour, pour in. I had to take down the video in the post in the community section because I didn't want to overtake from you guys because one day I might need y'all again <laughs> and the universe is watching thank you so much I made it to the funeral and yes this is what I wore I had to fell asleep when I got home but I um woke up and put my stuff back on and you know recording with what I had on at the funeral um but everything went well thank you thank you thank you so much i was extremely overwhelmed because at you know being a youtuber and you know asking for help from your subs your soul tribe is not an easy thing to do and this is you know this is something unexpected and unfortunate that you know i cannot afford to do but really wanted to do um, and I'm so glad I had that money, guys. Cause let me tell you what happened to me Thursday night, the night before, um, the funeral. So, um, I was on my way home. I ran some errands. I had picked up like a gift for my friend to give to him. And there's two buses I can take. So I'm standing at one bus stop and I look across the street and see that, that the other bus is coming. So I'm like, oh, let me go take that bus instead. Guys, I stepped off the sidewalk. My foot went into a like a small pothole. All right, I live in New York City. The streets are trash here. My foot goes in the pothole and goes click to the right. My right foot, and instantly I felt like a sting and a burning. And I was like, "Do not tell me I just broke my foot." I was so scared that and plus it's like in the streets so i didn't want to get hit by a car that was gonna come thank god it was a red light so i like hop back on the sidewalk keep in mind the sidewalk is high it's so high to the point where a person could sit on the sidewalk comfortably pretty much and i'm only five three so the fact that i had on uh like a wedge sneaker converses the high ass uh sidewalk and then my foot going into that damn pothole, snapping to the right, it was crazy. I'm just glad I didn't fall in the street and a car was coming. Thank God. I have very good balance. Like even for my weight, I, I, I'm, I'm usually a person who can break my fall and things like that. Um, even though I fell down my steps in my house the beginning of this year, terrible. But normally I can break my fall and thank God I did not fall in the street because that would have been ugly. So now I believe I sprained my foot, ankle basically. So um, believe it or not, <laughs> Scorpio, he's in a Scorpio. I had to go to the funeral with this guy. Thank God I had this from when my grandmother was alive and I have this cane and it like... Let me see how you do this again. Oh my gosh, how do you do this? Cause it does like go apart. Oh crap, oh see, it can fold up and stuff like that. So thank God I had a cane. I was able to walk Thursday night when I got home. Um, I went to like the store, I was walking, but I was limping. And then when I woke up Friday morning for the funeral, I couldn't walk. All the tenions in the foot were like really tight. I couldn't walk, guys. So I was late for the funeral because I had to literally ice my foot. I had to um, like walk around, do little foot exercises, look it up on YouTube, trying to move the foot around. Then I showered. It was a long process, guys. So I'm just glad that I don't work a nine to five and I, you know, I'm home mostly now because I don't know what I would do 
um, people are like, you need to go see a lawyer because like, what if something's really, really bad with your foot? So I'm going to have to look for a foot doctor, see if I can get an appointment next week to see what's going on. Cause I don't want to sit in the ER for five, six hours over a foot. I don't want to do it. So I'd rather try to find a foot doctor that can look at it. And, um, I still have my sneaker. I never rubbed it off. <laughs> maybe if they have to do an investigation or something like that, I'll see. I, maybe I have a case. I don't know. Um, but what if I broke my foot? Yeah, I definitely would be trying to sue New York City. Um, it's, it's disgusting. It's horrible. So yeah, please be careful if you're living in like a popular city. But, um, yeah, so I went to the funeral and, um, it, it went well. Everything went well. They had a repass. I stayed for the repass and i didn't go to the cemetery because they did everything all in one so they had the funeral and then they went to the cemetery i didn't go because i don't drive or whatever so i was at the center and um lovely family because i never really met like all his family and um so it was really great to be around good positive family everybody was calm and collected but here's what's funny is <laughs> One of the reasons why it was so important for me to go to this funeral, this friend and I, we've been friends. I'm going to be 40 next year. I'm not just spitting on myself. I'm going to be 40 next year. I met this guy when I was like 20, okay? And I remember when my mom passed away when I was 23, he was by my side at this funeral. He is a cancer. They're really emotional people, um, in tune with their emotions. And I always noticed that whenever I was dealing with a cancer man, they were able to like tap in and be more supportive when it came to emotions. And definitely he was that. I'll never forget that. He was by my side. He sat next to me. He walked in with me, you know, at my mother's funeral, even at the repast. He was sitting next to me, comforting me. He was just making sure nobody was messing with me. To the point that the narc stepfather was like, is this your man? Like, why is he all over you? And I'm like, no, it's not my man. You can tell me, is he your man? Is he your man? I'm like, no, he's not my man. But he was very protective of me. And I, I will never forget that because there were a lot of friends, friends around me when my mom passed away that made my mother's death about them. <laughs> or they weren't emotionally supportive of me. They, they, they disappeared on me. And the fact that he was there the entire way through which was beautiful and my mom always you know loved him and liked him too um him and i never dated uh we've been we've been platonic friends we met on blackplanet.com okay y'all remember black planet some of you do black planet and my space used to be like the jump off i don't remember black planet being a dating site but it was definitely used as a dating site and him and I like ended up meeting off the site. Nothing ever happened between us. We hung out. I remember we like went to Times Square and hung out and there was just like no chemistry and nothing like that. And we ended up being very good friends all these years, pretty much. Um, yes, so I have been through there through 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 a lot with him. He got married to a girl who I happened to go to, to school with. It was crazy. He got married. But she ended up being a narc and they got divorced. The narc wife told her, told him he, he couldn't be friends with me anymore. But when he, when he got divorced, he came back, he looked for me and our friendship continued. Um, so now he's dating another woman after this divorce. He's been divorced for like seven years now, but, um, now he's dating a woman and he lives upstate New York. So he's dating a woman, but she's older. She's in her 50s. I'm 39. He's 44, right? So we're like considered, like, I'm not considered 40s yet, but I'm basically in my 40s, right? So um, I was surprised when he told me he was dating a woman. I think she might be 10 years older than him. So she's like in her mid 50s. And um, I was like, oh, okay, that's nice, you know? Um, he looks a little older, so I can see why he probably attracted a woman a little bit older. And um, he not he didn't talk about her much. So they started dating in 2020. But when he started to reach out to me the last couple of weeks, 
um, talked about his mom, you know, still being in a hospital and how she's sick and still and um, just like I was comforting him. It just really clicked to me. I was just like, hmm, it seems like he needs a lot of emotional um, support. And I'm in my head like, why isn't his woman giving him that emotional support right so when he found out his mom passed away um he was at the girlfriend's house so he was like this was very weird and i'm like okay what happened and he said that when he went to scream out and cry because he just got off the phone with his family and they're like, you know, mom is gone. Um, she told him, shh, 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 I don't want the neighbors to hear. Soon as he said that, like a red flag went off in my head. I was just like, is this woman a narc? Because that's something that narcs do. Like when you're in a time of need, they'll belittle that. You know, they don't want to deal with having to support you or anything. They make it about them. And he was like, what are you talking about? I just found out my mom is dead. Like, I need to cry. I need to scream. Like, this is a normal reaction. And she's telling him, shush, shush, shush. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? So um, he said, and then when she got up to go to work, she was like, do you want me to stay with you for the day? Or, you know, can I go to work? And he was like, no, it's okay. You can go to work. So um, she went on to work. And when he got up, he said he saw a post-it on the fridge. And he read the post-it. And it, he thought it was going to be like a sweet note. Like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, babe. And um, I'll check on you or something like that. He thought it was going to say. And he was like, it said, um... I guess you don't need me then. And he was like, what? So he texted her and was like, that was disrespectful. That was unnecessary. Like, why are you being this way? And it's crazy because a lot of women would want men to be open. But yet when he's open and he's crying, he's showing his vulnerability and emotions, you know, because his mother died. Um, she's like being disrespectful and shutting down on him. And I'm like, oh, God, he already married a narc before. So I'm like, don't tell me that this woman's a narc, too. Um, you know, he's he's my friend is a little bit beta. And I, I noticed that a lot of narc women tend to, like, go after beta men. Right. <clears throat> Very sweet guy, you know, hardworking man. But his energy can give off beta at times, pretty much. But that last marriage did a number on him so when i asked him um like so do you need me to be there at the funeral he's like yes i want you there i'm gonna give you the information and it seemed very important for him that i go you know and we were on the phone for hours talking and stuff like that and um so I, that's why i was like i have to go to this funeral i have to go so I get to the funeral and um, this is like during the repast, right? I didn't even notice her because he wasn't like next to her like that. He wasn't like walking with her, talking with her and stuff like that. So I didn't even know she was there. He didn't even tell me that she actually showed up. So um, I was in the bathroom while they were like setting up the repast, uh, the tables and the chairs and stuff because the center didn't do it for some reason. I don't know. They were late. So the family ended up having to do it. So I went to the bathroom and as I come out, another woman comes out the stall and we're both washing our hands. And she's like, oh my gosh, this water's so cold. I'm like, I know it's freezing. So I don't know if this woman knew who I was. I wasn't sure. She was like, oh, your hat is so nice. Cause this is what I wore, you know, to the funeral. Oh my God, your hat is so nice. I said, thank you so much. So she's holding the door for me. And I just take like paper towel, wipe my hands. And she's like, yeah, I'll hold the door for you because, you know, so you don't have to touch the door. I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Thank you. So whatever. I ain't paying no mind. Um, honestly, I thought like maybe she was his aunt or something like that. Because she looks like she could be like his aunt pretty much. 
So um, I wait for the family. So when they're going to serve the food, I wait until the family eats first because like, I don't want them to be like, it's this woman and she's just coming, you know, eating food. But like, who is she? You know, basically. So I waited. And then when I saw hit when he got online at the end, I went behind him and got online and then that's when she walks up I, I, she probably was watching like oh let me see who this friend this bitch is right so he comes he's standing in front of me which i thought was kind of weird like why didn't you call your girlfriend over like babe come get food like he didn't even call his girl over i was like that's weird so i'm behind him he's in front of me and we're just like talking so he looks and he sees her coming in the direction so she's like oh babe you're about to get food or whatever and he's like yeah i'm about to get food so so he goes oh he goes Ange, this is my girlfriend i forgot her name whatever let's call her jeanette this is my girlfriend jeanette and i'm like oh hey girl and like we like grab hands like that i'm like hey girl i, I like oh i met her in the bathroom he was like oh for real he was like oh, okay I was like, yeah, him and I have been friends for like 20 years, you know. And she was like, cool, yeah, I heard about you and nice to finally meet you and stuff like that. And that was it pretty much. He got off the line. He was just like, no, this was weird too. He was like, oh, you know what? Um, My aunt, Accessoride, Accessoride is like a um company that picks up like disabled people or sick people. It's like a car service basically so they were outside waiting for her for his aunt so he said you know what i'm not gonna get my food now i'm gonna just take this plate and bring it to my aunt outside because she has to leave so she was like oh, okay what well, i mean can i take your spot in line and he was like yeah i guess so she was like yeah because i'm starving and i was just looking at her like eh, okay whatever so we got the food but i was sitting on the other side like near his dad and his aunt and I think grandmas and stuff like that and she was sitting at a table with like all his male cousins and things like that I didn't want to go over there because I wasn't trying to sit next to no men I didn't want no men in my face pretty much and um I really didn't I really didn't, didn't want to have a conversation with his girl pretty much right so um what I did was I, I sat and ate in my little corner. So then he gets up. My friend comes over. He's like, yo, come over there with us. Like, I don't want you sitting over here near these old folks. Just chilling. Like, just come over. So um, I was like, all right, cool. So he carries my purse and my cup of water. And I just follow through. Because keep in mind, my foot is, is jacked up. I'm walking with a cane now, right? So I so she moves over. So I'm sitting here. She's here and he's there and We're just like all talking or whatever the case, but when my friend gets up to go get like Refreshments or whatever some dr drinks and stuff She's like, oh, did you go to Howard University because my friend graduated from Howard and I was like No, I did not go to Howard. She was like, oh because uh, Let's say my friend let's call him Tom Tom um, all his friends are from Howard University. I was just like, no, I'm from New York, <laughs> basically. So she's trying to like find out. And I'm I'm in my head thinking, why didn't you ask him? How does he know me? How have we been friends for all these years? Like, why you got to get this information from me? I think this is like kind of rude. Like if I had a man and he had female friends, I'm not going to be questioning her. Like question him, you know? So I was like, she must not think I'm ugly if she's really questioning me. She got me on like, she's trying to figure me out or whatever. Like, sweetheart, I do not want Tom. I don't want Tom. Okay, Tom is my homeboy. So um, she's like, oh, okay. So then she spun back around again. And um, she's like, uh, are you, so you're from New York? I said, yeah, I'm from Queens. And um, uh, so she's like, oh, so then how do you how do you know Tom? Like, how did y'all meet? And keep on, she's only been with him for two years, so she's only known him for two years. So she could be intimidated. Like, dang, this woman known him for twenty years. She's a cute girl, you know. How like what's going on? Pretty much. 
So I'm like, no, we met on blackplanet.com. She was just like, oh, isn't that a dating site? I was like, no, I don't remember it being a dating site. It wasn't even anything like that. Like MySpace, Black Planet, people were meeting each other, being friends. Like it was not about dating pretty much. So, um, and plus I didn't know what he wanted her to know. That's why I'm like, I think it's disrespectful for like, the person's significant other to be all up in your business pretty much one thing i noticed was she couldn't look me in the eye she kept like looking around the room that's to me is not a good sign i was looking at her like i kept turning and i was like trying to make complete eye contact with her she would not make eye contact with me she would not look me in the face then she was like oh um i don't mean to be in your business or anything girl but are you single um, you got a man like you know what's going on with you and I was in my head like yeah she's trying to find out do I want her man like girl please I don't want time okay get out of here like no nah, I, I, I look at my friend like a brother okay I don't know what he look at me like as but I look at him as a bro so I used to start laughing and she's she's like uh getting a little nervous because she's probably like yeah maybe I crossed the line I was just like no um I'm I'm not dating anybody I said I got people in my life but I'm single she was like I said why and she was like oh because I want to hook you up with one of my friends I was like oh is your friend in their 40s or 50s and she was just like yeah he's an older gentleman I said no I don't date 40s and 50s <laughs> I was like I like them young <laughs> I was like nah I date men between like 30 and 35 you know I just feel like that's the group that I normally get along with and gravitate towards and she was like oh but don't be like that you never know maybe like your future husband could be in his 40s and 50s I said okay maybe maybe he could be but I said no thank you I don't do hookups Okay, if I'm going to end up with a crazy man, let it be my choice. I don't want nobody hooking me up with a crazy person. No, thank you. And second, if he ain't between 30 and 35, don't send him my way. Okay? <laughs> and it was so funny to me. She kept, like, trying to pressure the issue. And I was like, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. Um, when she's dating a whole man who's 10 years younger than her, but you telling me how come I'm not dating a man who's 10 years older than me? Get out of here, girl. Anyway. She's trying to make sure I get a man so I don't have to try to take her man. Ain't nobody want him but you. You know, and then she started, like, rubbing on his ear and rubbing on his, like, just unnecessary touching. Like, rubbing on his chest and his big old belly because my friend gained a crap load of weight. He had a big old pot belly now. And rubbing on his belly, like, girl, this is a funeral. <laughs> not the club like nobody is after your man you know so it's hard being a female friend but my point is with telling y'all that story is a lot of time narcissists during a time where you need them the most they will abandon you okay they will abandon you they cannot be they don't they don't have emotional intelligence they don't have emotional intelligence. They don't have empathy. They don't have sympathy, okay? And they can say the most horrific things to you when you need them the most, right? And I remember years ago when my mom, when my mom was passing away, right? The narc stepfather said to me, I'm sure I told the story before. <coughs> He said to me, how does it feel to watch your mother expire, expiring? And I said, expiring? Who would choose to use that word? And then he said, well, if I was you, I would off myself. If you know what that means, I would, I would off myself. This man was literally trying to convince me to myself, okay? And I want you to think about these things and don't overlook them. Don't overlook when people are showing you who they are, okay? And, you know, the narc stepfather came to the funeral, but he didn't want to really be by my side. He didn't want to sit next to me. 
he's tried to stay away from me. When I went up to do the family speech to speak on my mother's behalf on her life, I said, can you come up there with me? He was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to go up there. And he, I made him stand behind me. Um, he didn't want to do that. Narx, you see, you have to understand, when you're going through sorrow or when you even have an accomplishment in your life, they can't be there for you. They don't, it, it doesn't even matter if someone just died. It has to be about them. And, you know, sitting there thinking about, like, as I was listening to his girlfriend talk, everything was I, I, I. My friend um, is talking something about his mom. And she's like, yeah, I, 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 my mom, I, I, I. Everything was I, I, I. Everything has to be about them. And I also remember when the narc best friend, when his brother unfortunately committed you know what um he turned around and said to me oh how come my brother died how come your brother couldn't be dead so listen to these things pay attention okay and here this woman is at a repast of her man's mother you know and she's trying to figure out who i am. why are you even worried about that darling why are you even worried about that? You know, and it's sad that people could be this insecure and narcissistic. She wasn't focused on her man. She was focusing on trying to figure out who am I to him? Because, you know, she saw my light. She saw I came in there looking fly. And I am more attractive than her. I'm not trying to say she's ugly or anything like that. Or, you know, unattractive. But... She was intimidated. But to me, it's like, if you are so secure in yourself and your relationship, you wouldn't be worried about his little female friends or whatever the case is, you know? Um, but yeah, that was a really interesting experience. And I do think my friend's girlfriend is a narc. What do you think, guys? But sorry that I told this long story. <laughs> oh my gosh. I told this long story because... These narcs are everywhere. It's terrible. They're everywhere. But pay attention to these I, 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 I conversations and these interrogation question and, uh, you know, prying and digging. And that's not a normal person. That's not a normal spirit, you know. And I will be praying for my friend. But I think he senses a lot is off because he did open up to me more things about their relationship which i'm not going to disclose on youtube um but he's not in love with her even their chemistry was like off like you know how like you with a couple and you could just feel like that sexual tension no i didn't feel none of that between them it was like yeah she's out the door oh yes she said something weird too she said a lot of weird, but another weird thing she said was, oh, after I'm done with him, I'm going to get me a 25-year-old. Who says that to their man? A freaking narcwood. Because it, it's like you're trying to put up insecurity. And he was eating his food and he just looked at her and was like, hmm. He said, okay, do you. So I don't even think my friend is really into her like that, but um, he, he's a good guy. He really deserves a good woman, woman, and I really, I really wish that he would stop attracting these narcissistic women. Um, but I wish him the best. But it does sound like he has one foot in and one foot out. And I did play a little life coachy with him, and I asked him, I said, "What are you getting from her?" And he got quiet, and he said, "Ooh." That's a good question. And you know what? I don't know. A lot of times, and a lot of men do this, they'll be with a seat warmer. She's not really the woman you want. You just don't want to be alone. You don't want to be horny. Um, so you date these women until you find what you're really looking for. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Use your hand if you got to. Don't, don't do that. Don't waste people's time. Um... Just don't do that. Don't do that. But the energy I get from her is 
insecure. I wouldn't even be surprised if she was cheating on him. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. I would not be surprised. Because any woman doing all that investigation, you're insecure or you're cheating. Pretty much, you know. And there's other things that she's done trying to control him and stuff like that. And I don't like it. But I talked for 30 minutes, so let me get the hell up off this video. Yes, continue to donate to me um, to get more videos out of me <laughs> to um, support my channel. Um, book these phone sessions if you are interested in knowing more information on chosen ones, um, spiritual experiences, narcissism. You just need somebody to vent to. I am your goddess okay i am the life coach for you the spiritual life coach for you i will be your favorite spiritual life coach i'm gonna put that out into the universe um all the information and in how to donate and how to book with me is always in the comment section or in my description bar um in the video okay Thank you again to everybody who donated for me to get to that funeral. I love you guys. Y'all made me cry just a little bit. You did. You did. I was, I was watery, okay? And I really appreciate y'all. I really, really do. And another video was coming up because I had a video request um, from Wendy who donates every week to me, actually. She's been on point um i'm not gonna say everybody's name because i don't know if you know they want me to say their name so i'm not going to call out the donators names but thank you guys i love you talk to you soon